Society is rushing to get rid of low-skilled workers. Society is rushing to get rid of low-skilled workers. Many companies are now rushing to get rid of people who work in food delivery service and food preparation. Watch this video to fully understand the implications this is going to have on these terrible individuals, why they won't be able to work or feed their families anymore. And I'll elaborate on why that's a good thing. And now let's just go ahead and jump right into the video. And China's new sector that's been dubbed the low altitude economy is heating up as the country struggles with the impact of its real estate recession. The southeastern city of Shenzhen has long been at the heart of China's high-tech industry. And this park is home to one of the latest innovations. It's a mobile food and drink delivery service. Drones arrive from participating stores carrying customers' orders. Enter a passcode and... The transaction is complete. This service is a new offering from the operator of a popular delivery app. It currently has many drone ports like these at more than 10 locations around the city. The Chinese government hopes that promoting the use of drones at altitudes below 1,000 meters can boost the faltering economy. More than 4,000 different models were on show at this exhibition in Shenzhen. Applications cover everything from deliveries to disaster recovery and even flying taxis. So guys, the ultimate goal right now is to get rid of these individuals. There's actually a robot called Flippy over in California right now. Various locations have begun using it. And this, this robot has actually evolved over the years. What it can do is, and I've showed you videos of it before, is it is able to flip burgers and make fries. So basically, it can handle the food, food preparation process. Now, of course, they still do use a person to put everything together. The burger, the machine has not mastered the art of putting together food yet. However, I'm going to tell you right now that that's not a big problem to overcome. You see, what they'll simply do is design the food around the machine. And so, for example, you'll have buns, bread that is designed to, that is designed in such a way that it's, um, that the machine will be able to easily stack it and put everything together. So it may change the way that we eat our food a little bit and the look and feel of our food, but ultimately that's where it's, go that's what's going to happen. And, you know, people are going to deal with it unless they want to pay even more food, more money to purchase food from, you know, from someone who works at McDonald's. There's a lot of you who are like, oh, I want, you know, we don't want those people to lose their jobs working at McDonald's. You don't understand. Some people need those jobs. Some people need those jobs. There is nothing else that they can do. That's a load of BS. That's, you know, you could never make that type of argument back in the 80s and 90s. Okay. Fast food jobs were for people who were just basically getting started in life, like teenagers or people maybe in between jobs or the dregs of society. You were not working a fast food job as an, as an adult and expecting to raise a wife and a kid on that or, you know, or, or provide for yourself on that. And we knew that. Now today you have people who are like, well, there's nothing else I can do. So, you know, I need this job and I deserve a livable wage because I'm a human being. This is a form of socialism where they're rich, they're stealing from the rich the gift to the poor because these jobs are just causing hyperinflation. They're causing the cost of living to increase for everyone else. And for example, if a person makes twenty dollars at McDonald's to flip burgers and and for and, and shake fries, that doesn't mean that if I'm working in insurance making twenty dollars an hour, I'm also going to see an increase in my salary. Okay. And I'm going to say to my boss, well, these people at McDonald's are making twenty dollars an hour, so that means that you know, for the, you know, I have a, I have a, a, a bachelor's degree and all of this other crap, and years of experience. So that means that I deserve to be making at least thirty or forty dollars an hour. They're not going to see it that way. They're going to say, well, you can go and find another job. 
Okay. And all the while, the cost of living is going up around us. The cost of food is going up around us because of what these people are doing. And it, and it gets passed on to people who actually went, got an education or learned a trade so that they could make more money. And even then they're still not making more. So basically we're being robbed on all fronts by the, by the people in our society who offer the least value. There's some of you idiots who are th who are saying things like, you know, people who work in food preparation, they're just as valuable as educators. Don't get me wrong. A lot of educators are crap today, but you know, it's like throwing the baby with the bat order out. You have to be mindful and realistic about the situation. Okay. It's like, you know, a food, a I've, I've had, I've, I've literally had, I had a doctor in the comments pop up and say that he was getting ready to walk away from medicine because the notion that, that, you know, a person working in McDonald's deserves to have make a minimum, a livable wage like a physician is a load of absolute and total BS. Absolute and total BS. I'm going to be honest with you. A lot of you that listen to my videos that are not where you want to be in life right now, life is very hard. Life has ups and downs. But there are some of you that are blaming others for, for what's happened to you in life. Our boomer parents were terrible for, as Gen Xers. Our boomer parents were absolutely horrible people. Guess what? No one gives a damn. The world doesn't give a damn about you. You just have to keep on grinding and building and grinding and building. And that's something that you have to hear. All right? Uncle Angry tells you the truth, but a lot of you don't want to hear the truth. Want, some guy is 57 years old, and he's like, well, my life is basically over. And it's like, bro... You know, you didn't get what you wanted in life, but I'm looking at your profile picture. You're overweight. Whose fault is that? And I'm, don't get me wrong. It, losing weight can be very, very hard. It can be extremely difficult to lose weight. Okay. Obesity is 100% a disease, but that does not, that's not an excuse for not trying. How many of these guys are going to the gym? How many of these guys are trying keto or the Mediterranean diet? Well, I'm depressed. Uh, yeah, guy. Yeah, bro. The life, the world doesn't care about your depression. Don't get me wrong. You know, and, and you say you're depressed, but you're able, but you're still going to this crap job that you do every day. Right. Yeah. But that's, that's, that's been pretty much all I can really handle. You know, and I, it's like, you just threw your guys never underestimate just how stupid people are around you and never argue with a stupid person because they will always beat you with experience. These are things that George Carlin said. I've never truly completely understood it. I never realized just how mediocre most people are and how mediocre the and how most people strive to live to live mediocre lives. A is for guys in, in the school of grading, A is for average. It really is. Cuz you know, being a doctor or a lawyer or these types of jobs or an, or an engineer, that's an average person. Those are average jobs, all right? And most people today are just trying to be mediocre. The average person right now is just trying to be mediocre. They're not even trying to be, they, they're not even, a lot of people just want to live in a mediocre life and get by on me, you know, and have a mediocre and get a, a livable wage for mediocre, for mediocre crap. Society has changed substantially. And the amount that you have to put in to get out of it is hard. But guess what? The answer is not communism or socialism. I'm just being very, very clear about that. A lot of people think that, well, you know, screw it. This is capitalism sucks, man. All right. The cap, it's it's capitalism. That's why we're all suffering. That's why we're having hyperinflation. Uh, it's actually no, when we started giving out a bunch of free money back in 2020, which was basically our our, our for our a test run in socialism. That's one of the largest contributing factors to why we are where we are right now. A lot of people would never want to admit to any of that. It's the truth. It's the honest to goodness truth. All right. A lot of it has to do with all the funny money that we were handing out. And now it's coming back and biting us in the butt. Because when you print money out of thin air and begin circulating money, that money, what ends up happening? You end up with hyperinflation. Okay. Because it's not properly assigned to act to any real value other than I can print it and people will spend it. All right. This is, if you look at how Venezuela had their meltdown, you know, almost a decade ago now, you know, this is they practice socialism in Venezuela. They did price controls in Venezuela and it completely tanked the economy and they've never recovered. 
and now they have a tyrannical state go state run government and maduro is just basically like any other communist dictator at this point if you google what's happening in venezuela it's pretty terrible over there right now it's absolutely horrendous and that's the reality that a lot of these idiots in Western society want because they want easy lives. And just because they haven't gotten what they wanted, just because c companies are screwing us over, they think the answer is to burn everything down or to turn to socialism and, and, and let socialism fix the problem for us. And they don't care one way or another. They can care less about economics. They can care less about everything and anything else as long as they get their money. You can say, well, you don't you understand the money's going to lose value. They don't give a damn. Because the average person is extremely stupid. The average person is an is an idiot. Just imagine the stupidest person that you know, and then and 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 then cons and then understand that half of every half of all the people around you are dumber than that person. Like that's that's another take from George Carlin. Like imagine the stupidest person you know, and imagine the dumbest person you know, and then imagine that half of all the people around you are dumber than that person. And now you begin to understand why, how we ended up in the state of affairs that we are currently in and why we're not, it's not going to be an, an easy ride going forward. Uh, the development of this economy is of great benefit to companies operating unmanned helicopters and drones. It can bring new opportunities and help drive business. Agriculture is one sector that's already feeling the benefit of China's drone boom. A specialized model can carry chemicals used in crop spraying. This mandarin grower says both the farm's layout and bad weather can make manual spraying inefficient. More than a dozen people take four or five days to do the spraying. Drones can finish it in a few hours, which saves on chemicals, time and labor. I'm really grateful. About a third of China's farmers have already begun using drones, and that's expected to help with labor shortages, as well as revitalizing farming villages. If these kinds of drones are accepted by farmers, that will create a whole new industry for them and greatly boost agriculture as a whole. One key element still needs to be in place place before China's low-altitude economy can really take off. Rules and regulations to cover issues like airspace use and safety are currently insufficient. The country's largest drone manufacturer is urging the government to speed up related legislation. Government policies can allow a range of industries to consider whether or not to use drones in their production processes. Guys, I'm telling you right now, we're going to be living in a very different world in 10 to 20 years, maybe even five years. And I'll explain why. There's a saying, never, ra never waste a good crisis. And the truth is that change typically doesn't happen. It doesn't happen the way that we would imagine it. For example, you can have a decade, an entire decade where everything is just kind of like flat and nothing really changes much. And then suddenly a cr something will happen and everything changes overnight. If you look at what happened after the events of 2020, everything changed. Society, is a, the world, is a much different place than it was just five years ago. Just five years ago, the world is substantially different. Look at the value of money. Look at how we use technology now. You can't even go to a restaurant and get a menu anymore. You have to use a phone. If you go to the airport and you want to travel, you cannot, guys, you cannot get on the plane in a lot of places unless you have a cell phone. You have to have a cell phone. You have to be able to like scan a QR code and then fill out like a fill out like a passenger check-in thing process online. It's insane. It's insane. And that's how that's how insane it was like a few years ago. Like this is like you cannot travel anymore without a phone. What about people? This is the real. It's a crazy society that we live in. It's a crazy world. It's not just in the United States. It's outside of the United States. It's ever. It's expanding. 
So what guys, the next there's the next time there's a major crisis, they've been working on AI guys right now. And, you know, the technology is there. And they said that within about three years, over the next two to three years, this technology will be heavily implemented across major companies, across many major industries. The next time we have a major economic crisis, guys, another recession, official recession, because we've been in a deep recession already, or, or, you know, it's officially a depression. That's when, guys, all of this technology will suddenly go boop. They'll press a button. They'll start firing everyone, and they will use the crisis as an opportunity to get rid of get rid of as many people as possible, replace them with AI, and it will basically be like you're in a completely different world in within one to two years. Within a year, within a couple of months, the world will begin changing. And within two years, it's like you're in a completely different world, and the world just changed, just like like took like a tw- ten to twenty year shift. That's how these things actually happen. It happened with smartphones where, you know, before 2007, you know, we didn't have smartphones. And then, and and the world was a very different place, you know, and there was no, and social media was not prominent as it was. And then just fast forward a couple of years later, and you have technology everywhere. You have smartphones, and they've completely disrupted the entire world. And AI is going to do the exact same thing, guys. Like, I use AI heavily in my life right now. I use AI heavily. Even when I'm not using AI, I'm using AI. Many of you don't even realize that you're using AI. You know, when you're using something, when you're doing a search on Google now, you don't even realize you're using AI. And the search and, your, you know, the search results that are popping up for some of you are literally are literally uh, utilizing generative AI. You don't even realize you are using AI. It's going to embed itself. It's in, it's already doing it. It's embedding ourselves in every fra- fabric of our society. And you know, over the coming years, you know, the big goal is you're gonna be, you're gonna call customer service on your phone, and you're not gonna be speaking to a person. You're gonna be speaking to a machine, and it might suck. It might not be as efficient as speaking to a person, but you're gonna be speaking to a machine. You're going to be speaking to AI, and it will basically respond to you, you know, as natural as possible. It's not going to be perfect. Companies don't give a damn. There is no way that they're going to waste even five dollars. That they're going to lose even five dollars for a person when they can have a machine doing this, and it doesn't cost them. It, it if you want to like do the math, like a fraction of a fraction of like not even a dollar, like pennies, or sometimes even. The fraction, a fraction of a cent. No company, if, you know, even if even if it impacts like you know quality of quality of service, very few. As long as it's it works, just if, as long as it's good enough, no company is going to pay someone even five dollars an hour. We're talking about even in the Philippines, five dollars an hour, or even two or three dollars an hour. You heard me. When they can have this, this when they can have a machine. Do it for them for the equivalent of a penny or half a penny. And they'll just keep all of that money to themselves. Eventually, of course, laws will have to be passed, you know, to uh, to do something about this. For example, it's basically money going into the corporations, but money money not coming out. Because if all of the jobs are replaced by, artif- ar- by artificial intelligence, if you have companies that are running their entire business off AI, And so basically the way that money is supposed to work is, you know, the consumer spends money at a company and then the money returns to the returns to the economy through the employees. And then the and then the company and then the uh, corporation will also reinvest in society and they'll basically create more jobs. But if corporations are no longer creating jobs, then all of the money that they get, they'll basically just keep for themselves and then they'll base, and then they'll turn around and begin using that money as they'll put that money as they'll make that uh they'll make that money will available in the form of loans so they'll start banks for example GE capital that stands for General Electric okay so basically all of the money that General Electric was making and you know they took all of that money all of the excess money that they should have been paying to their employees they took it formed the bank and then basically began loaning that money out OK, that's how they do it. So basically, people cannot survive to live, cannot afford to live. So they turn around, they start loaning this money out. And then people now have to pay interest 
on money that really they were supposed to be earning in the first place. It's a very evil thing. So that's exactly how companies will begin operating, where they'll begin taking that money and they'll just start loaning that money out and getting interest on it. So basically, you become a you are one hundred percent a wage slave, all right, and you have no recourse to this. So that's that's very very much the world and reality that we're headed for. It's a nasty it's a nasty world, man. It's a nasty world. It's a nasty society, and you just have to be you have to be strong. You have to be aware of it, and you have to basically say that I'm not going to. Um, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna lay down and just take and take and take everything that happens in the sense that you're gonna have to. You're gonna have to hustle. You're gonna have to grind. You're gonna have to keep on pushing forward, because that's how society is. That's how reality is. Reality is a hard thing. But I'm just glad that a lot of these losers won't have work soon, because they don't deserve those jobs. They really. They offer no real value, and it, you know I, I've suffered so much in my life working so damn hard, and it's easy for me to just turn around and say, you know what? I wish I had just done this and this and this. Well, the truth of the matter is that a lot of these people that are doing this, they're not going to have jobs and they're not going to, they think they're going to just go and burn down society. It's not that easy. They can try. A lot of them will be met with resistance, with enforcers. And there's going to be a lot of people in tent city. There's going to be a lot of extreme poverty. That's the reason why you need to learn how to build up a business, build a brand. You know, don't forget, guys, I have an entire, uh, I have an entire course coming for you guys, which is going to teach you how to build a business and a brand on YouTube. You know, this is a six figure channel that I built over the course of just a year. You know, that's not counting the MW. That's not counting my other channels as well. So you need to you really need to get on your hustle. You need to get on your grind. You need to understand that nothing lasts forever. You need to be you need to be very, very serious, guys, about your future. You have to be very serious about your future because no one else is going to be serious. No one can guys. Society does not care about you. No one cares about you. The only person that cares about you is God and you, all right? And sometimes it will feel like God doesn't care about you at all when you think about the things that you will pass through in this world. It's, 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 uh, I look back at the pain and suffering I've gone through, and I just sometimes you know, I wonder how God did you let me go through that? And there's not much you can do. You just kind of have to accept it and just keep faith in God and have and love God even when he lets you suffer like hell like he like the suffering i've passed through i've cursed god a million times because of the pain and suffering i've gone through when i was ill and but when doing that you're putting the direction on god sometimes you guys you don't know what absolute pain is some of you do some of you pass through some extreme illnesses but gosh guys i'm telling you when you go through some extraordinary pain due to illness my god you sometimes you will wish you could just Pass and you cannot. I'm telling you guys, I've been through that. I have lived through some suffering that no human being should pass through. And even then, I know there is worst. Even then, I know there is worst. The burgers at this Los Angeles fast food restaurant are classic, but the workers may be the future. Cali Express touts itself as the world's first fully autonomous restaurant. Okay, you're going to help me. Get Wally to make me a burger, is that right? From facial recognition as you order. So go ahead and put in your order. Okay. So we'll do the burger with everything and some raw onion, of course. To the robot chefs behind the counter, almost everything here is made by machines. The fries by a robot called Flippy. Flippy is using his robot arm to grab a basket. He's going to bring it over here to this freezer and we'll dispense an order of fries into it. Because a robot arm is just a robot arm, but the secret sauce here is the AI that really powers it. And for the main course, there's the burger bot, grinding the meat fresh, forming patties, and grilling to order. As it spins around and as it gets to the end, it'll scoop it up and it'll dump it into this bucket. Major chains are already starting to bite into AI and automation. Wendy's experimenting with AI-powered drive throughs Welcome to Wendy's. What would you like? Salad chain Sweetgreen has salads rotating through automation. Chipotle even has robots building its burrito bowls. What would you say to people that say, listen, this is taking away jobs? Restaurants have a really hard time finding workers, and it costs them a lot to have those workers. So you want to be very thoughtful about where you put those workers, because working the fry station is a pretty undesirable job. It's dangerous. You burn your arms.
Automation will likely eliminate some jobs. That may be inevitable. They didn't choose that it's 30 percent. But Brian Justy, who researches labor practices at UCLA, warns an all-robot kitchen may not be on the menu anytime soon. I think there's a kind of significant smoke and mirrors trick happening here where you get claims of full automation. Because even at what they call the world's first fully autonomous restaurant, there's Hinoveva. The robot helps me out a lot, and then I help the robot in turn. She makes these burgers whole, adding toppings and, of course, the bun, something these robots haven't quite mastered yet. All right, let's try this. Not bad. A bite into the future, whether we're ready or not. Guys, I'm telling you right now, let me make this very clear. If you don't think that the engineers are already working on this problem, you are insane, all right? Figuring out how to eliminate that, that lady so that assembles the food, you're crazy, all right? If it means changing the way that the food is structured, they will do it. For example, there are some, bur there are some burger buns that are flat on the top. And if that helps to, if making burger buns that are, that align with better, that are better in alignment with the burgers themselves, they will do that. All right. I'm telling you right now, this is where it's headed. Okay. Because no one is going to continue paying these kinds of costs, $30 an hour for someone who works at McDonald's. You have got to be absolute kidding, absolute, absolutely kidding me. I'm guys, I'm so so sick and tired of hearing it's about kindness. No, it's about theft. It's about robbery. It's about taking advantage of people. That's what it's about. It has nothing to do with kindness. It has everything to do with robbing humanity. It has everything to do with socialism. All right. And if they don't get it one way, they'll get it another way. That's what they're really doing. Focusing on intelligent meal distribution system for restaurants, each project is customized according to owner's demand. Provide efficient labor-saving solutions, including turntable train, straight train, express delivery lane, food delivery robot, and tablet ordering system sold to more than 40 countries. The ordering system allows guests to order meals freely and increase processing speed. Kitchen receive information immediately. Meals can be prepared more efficiently. Through the interconnection with delivery system, efficiency will be double. Also, prevent delivering to wrong table. So as you guys can see right here, many of you guys are like, don't use conveyor belt delivery. But they've already figured out how to deal with this and prevent things like food tampering, where they have the machines that will literally cover your food. So it'll basically close and it won't open until it gets to the right table. This is another, guys, this is another big innovation. It's another very big innovation. And this is something that you can end up having at a, even a restaurant like Denny's. It absolutely is. You could easily end up with an innovation like this at Denny's where your food basically comes just like this on a conveyor belt. And you reach in, you take your plate out, and that's it. And there's no waitress or anything in. You need a drink, you put it in an order. It goes to the kitchen. The, the chef in the kitchen puts the drinks in there. You reach in, you take your drink out, all right? They can even have a machine that's, that prints out labels immediately. And the chef just basically takes them, puts a label here, puts a label there. And it could do it even automatically. You'll get to a point where the drinks, where the machines are just, where everything is automatic. So, for example, the, even the fountain machines are automatically dispensing the drinks. And the investment is, is absolutely great because it may cost more. It may cost money to buy these machines and invest in these machines. But over the course of a year and a couple of years, the machine is going to not only pay for itself, but when you have things like food delivery services now, these machines are going all night long. These machines don't need to sleep. So these machines can operate 24 hours a day and people are up all night. They're ordering food all night. So these machines will cut out the labor will cut out the labor labor cost, and the people who do these jobs they're just going to end up in the streets. They're going to end up being homeless. They're going to end up in the streets. End up in shelters, living in their cars, living in the woods. You know, 
living in the sewers where they belong with the Ninja Turtles, but they're not going to be out here destroying society like they think they're going to be. They're really good. They're going to suffer. They're going to suffer. The speed of straight type food delivery train reached one meter per second. Track can be designed to multiple layers, which greatly improves food delivery efficiency. It is very popular among large catering groups. The variety of train design with additional sound and light notification makes food delivery more interesting. Automatic front cover can be upgraded to enhance sanitation protection. The train stops precisely at each table. Guests pick up meals easily. Express laneway delivery system, simple and stylish design. Highlight the decoration with low key and calm. Exquisite craftsmanship of the meal does not require the embellishment of carrier. Meals are delivered all at once, without the waiting of carrier return to kitchen for next delivery. Efficiency is twice of train type. Meal delivery is neat but gives a full sense of security. Basket collection system is built underneath the track. Quickly carry heavy and dirty dishes from outfield to kitchen. Reduce personnel traveling time. Paired with sushi plate dishwasher for high-speed wash and air dry. Make the use of manpower more efficiently. The intelligent rail-type food delivery robot. Equipped with self-developed world-leading technology. Suitable for all kinds of meals. Using AI intelligent navigation technology to calculate shortest path. Support U-turn lane crossroads and curves. With a speed up to one meter per second, multi-robots operation synchronously. Unique capsule shape and lighting effects, making food delivery more interesting. The automatic protective cover isolates droplets bacteria effectively and improves the hygiene of restaurant. Hand over food delivery to robots, reduce the workload of waiters, and enable them to focus more on table service. And guys, especially when you have if they if they push if we end up having another uh, global event where we have to practice things such as social uh, avoidance of one another again, guess what? They'll be pushing things like you know things like this, like oh contact contactless food service, where you don't where you don't come in contact with another person, you don't come in contact with a waitress, guys. No waitress. If there's no one bringing your food to you, that eliminates most that eliminates a significant portion. Off the staff, that guys, I'm telling you, it's 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 gonna be, it's no joke. It is no joke. What's coming? Okay, these people are gonna lose their jobs, and when they lose their jobs, they're not gonna have anything to turn to because these are lazy people. They didn't want to work hard in life. They didn't want to develop themselves. They didn't want to develop new skills, and now they're gonna have to suffer. There are guys. There are people in this world who who who, who struggled in school. Don't have very good memories, very terrible, not very good at math, not very good at reading. And guess what? Doesn't matter. They had to do the hard work. They had to put in the hard work. This is the reason why, you know, I remember when I was at this company over 20 years ago, there was this lady who worked there. And she said, she said to me that she used to go to school with a guy. And he used to be like a, like an idiot in school. Like, you know, he was like one of those class clowns. This guy was an idiot. Like, this guy's not going to go anywhere. And now fast forward many years. This woman is like in her 50s, pushing 60, and she reveals to me that he's not, she found out that he was an attorney, and she just couldn't believe it. You see, guys, school is a place that indoctrinates you. But the truth is that when you, when it comes to real life, it's about the person willing to suffer the most. It's about the, will, the person willing to show up. It's about the person willing to keep on going and grinding and pushing and doing the jobs that no one else wants to do. It's about... It's about working in the late hours of the night and not having any free time. It's about it's about pushing and grinding and giving it your all. And life is never going to be perfect. Life will never be perfect. Life will never be easy. Some people live life on easy mode, but then they end up with life on hard mode. For example, the saying is especially, and this is usually directed on women, but it's about it applies to people in general, men too, you know. Those who are born rich leave the world poor, and those who are born poor tend to leave the world rich. 
And that's because the people who are born rich, they basically don't work for anything in life. But as they get older, you know, that, you know, they basically, they're, that easy life begins to deteriorate. And they never learn how to take care of themselves, provide for themselves, put in the hard work throughout the course of their lives. So then they continue to expect the gravy train to continue going on forever, but it doesn't. And then when they get old, they find themselves with nothing. And it's not just like overnight. A lot of these people, they end up in their 40s, 30s and 40s, and life just changes suddenly. They can't provide for themselves, and they are not used to providing for themselves. And they threw away a decade or multiple decades where they should have been learning and grinding and building and creating something. And now they're screwed. And they sink into mediocrity. If you're a person who's worked hard in life and you know you still end up and you still ended up screwed over, you know, I can empathize for you. But most a lot of people are not like that. A lot of people, they lived mediocre lives. It's amazing when I hear stories like, bro, you did literally nothing with your life for 20 or 30 years. All right, for 40 or 50 years. That's why I've warned you about Chad and Tyrone. Sometimes you'll see these old white guys and old black guys, old white guys, like they still look kind of good looking, but you know, they're they're like they shriveled up and everything. And what you don't understand is that they were out there in the streets for decades doing drugs, running around, playing games. They never developed themselves as men. So now you have so now where are they? They're in the streets. All right. And they have and you'll see them smoking a cigarette. And guys, forget these people. Forget these people. And then you'll have guys like, uh, and you have the old Tyrones, and you're like, hey, 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 how you doing, man? How you, man? How you doing, man? Can, can, I, can I get a cigarette off you? Those old jerk, those old jokers, all right? And these, these people were creating problems in society. They were running around, running around, creating problems, and they never developed themselves, and now they're, all, now they're homeless, and they're running their mouths about society and people and oppression. Bro, you put yourself there, bro. You put yourself there. Little Poncho, little Poncho, little Poncho is out there too. Little Poncho is out there too, but he's out there trying to steal, you know, trying to. <laughs> ah. Oh gosh, guys, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, these people, they, they created this reality for themselves. They said that they didn't want to work hard. They wanted everything handed to them. And now this is the reality that they're facing and they need to deal with it. And by the way, guys, I just want to remind you, that we have a we have our own site now. We have our own platform called Angry uh, Angry Guys Clubhouse. You can actually head over. You can find a link to the Angry Guys Clubhouse in description in the um, in description of the video. And you also see something pop up on your screen. We have all kinds of great stuff. We have podcasts for you. We have chats. We have extended videos. We have guides. Everything on making money to building your own business and brand. It's we have a lot of great stuff for you over here on the Angry Guy chat on the Angry Guy Clubhouse. Let's say chat house on the Angry Guy Clubhouse. I put out new articles every single day or virtually every day for you guys. There's always something over here, so you can find videos, you can find podcasts, you can find articles. I write I write these myself. It's really awesome. You can get in touch with me. You can you know touch base. There's everything that you can want over here, and then so much more. And I'm able to reach out to you directly. So if if, if something ever happens to me. On this platform, I can still reach you through through the Angry Guy Clubhouse. You basically go over here, you put in your email address. And also, when you sign up, when you uh, when you subscribe to my Clubhouse, you also get access to the uh, to our incredible dig uh, free digital nomad blueprint. So you get a copy of the f digital nomad blueprint. That's going to help you to start your own business. You know, get things going. Get you know, pull away from the economy. It's not. It's not just. It, there's a so. There's so much in the digital nomad blueprint. So much in there. So you want to get a copy of that, and you get a copy just by signing up. By just by uh, signing up on the clubhouse, it goes. It's completely free, and it goes straight to your um to your email. It's right in the welcome email. But yeah, guys, there's a link to a description of the video. So yeah, guys, I mean, society is rushing. It's rushing very very fast towards this point. You're gonna have a lot of women who are gonna lose these jobs in these service in this, in this in this in the service industry because a lot of because mo it's the service industry is mostly made up of women. The overall operation efficiency is improved, dining time is shortened, and the increase of table turnover rate benefits restaurants. Hong Shang Technology is a professional manufacturer of automated food delivery system. The company is composed by a group of professional project consultants, R and D design and services team. 
With nearly 20 years of professional experience, we provide the most comprehensive advice and implementation for meal delivery planning, product customized development, and catering trend discussion. Our service and customers are globalized through our team that pursues the goal of perfection. We provide excellent products and services to each partner. Hong Shang Technology adheres to the belief of customer-oriented, service-oriented, innovative, and mutually beneficial. We give you absolute trust and professional service. Guys, this is and guys, this was like two years ago. I just want you to know they've they've been working on this technology over the last couple of years. You could see that they were wearing masks in those most of the people in those video in those, that video they were wearing masks. So this is technology that they were developing two. To, they were already putting in place two or two to three years ago. All right, this is an old video. This is an old video, y'all. All right. So I want you to understand this is what's coming. This is what's coming to your local Denny's. This is what's coming to your local sit in restaurant, guys. All right. Those jobs are going to be eliminated and people are going to be much happier not having to deal with another person. Imagine being able to go to a restaurant and not having to place an order with another human being. People are going to say that it's superior, not having to worry about getting a tip. And the only consequence is that the machine will come over. It'll bring your food to your table. It'll be sealed in a compartment so no one can tamper with it. And you just reach in, take out your own damn plate, and put it on the table yourself. You want drinks? You don't have to wait for some, some mean waitress to come by and grab your order. You basically do it on the do it on the tablet on the on the table or do it using your phone. And within a couple of and within within minutes, you're right, boom, your drinks are there. This will improve service so much more. Who cares what happens to these people who lose their jobs? They don't give a damn about you. Why the hell would you care about them? To be honest with you, they're over entitled and they think that they deserve something for nothing. All right. Holding on to these extremely easy jobs. They're like, oh, well, if you don't want to tip your waitress, then, then stay home and eat ramen noodles. No. How about I go to a restaurant that's fully automated where I don't have to tip at all. I don't have to even deal with a person and the food will come straight to me. I'll come from the kitchen. The chef will prepare it. I'll come out on the, and it'll come straight to me. I can grab my own food. I can have drinks when I want them. And I don't have to worry about someone spitting in my food either. And, you know, and then when I'm done, I pay, I leave, and there is no tip. And that's it. And if they want to charge, and if the restaurant, you know, slaps out an extra fee, you know, because it's automated, I don't care. They can build it into the food or they can, or they can charge me a service fee for the cost of, for, for the, for the machines in there. I don't care, but I'd rather pay. I'd rather, because at least you're getting a flat fee, guys. Think about it. It's a flat fee. It's not like an extra 5 or $10. Guys, it's not a percentage of your meal. And I'm going to charge you a percentage of your meal. You always, it's let's say it's 5 bucks. all right? You, you know, you, your food costs this amount, and then they charge you 5 bucks for the service because, uh, you know, for the machines, the cost of the machines and maintenance. That's $5. I know every time I go in there, I'm always going to have to spend $5 for that. Oh, well. OK, but it's no longer going to be 10 percent or 50 or well, not even 10, 15 or less, these days it's it's at least 17 or 20 percent. No more of that crap. So I can go in there. I can have a great meal, enjoy myself thoroughly. And I spend five bucks for the for the for the um, for the machine that brought me my damn food. And I'm happy as a pig in mud. All right. I don't know why I have so many damn delivery drivers on my channel either. I can't stand them. I don't really, I don't like these delivery drivers. It's not like they're ever going to be of any value to me. Oh, angry, blah, blah. I don't care. But like, if you're a delivery driver, I really don't care about you like that. I'm just being real. Like if you're one of my subscribers and you deliver food, I don't really care about you. I don't care about you. I don't like you. You know, I'm if I, if, if, if you can't feed yourself or your family, Honestly, I'm not crying for you. I really do not like the food delivery drivers. I don't like people who I don't like restaurant. You know, with people who um people who do service work in restaurants. It's changed. It's it was different in the past, but now no. Like wait waiters and waitresses. I really rejoice knowing that these people won't have won't be able to feed themselves and their families in the future because these jobs will be gone. If you know you work in fast food and you're cooking fries, I don't like you guys either. Restaurant workers outside of like the cooks, like in the kitchen, I'm cool with the cook because like the cook, you know, they that's a job, all right. They're cooking food. They actually have to have a set of skill sets. I'm cool with the cook, but the general person, like the waiters, waitresses, taking, you know, 
these other people like working at McDonald's. I don't like, listen, I am so glad that, that those jobs will be going away. A lot of them, a lot of these people won't be able to support to survive anymore. They will have to end up in shelters or on the streets where they belong. That's where they're supposed to be. They're supposed to be in those shelters. They're supposed to be in the streets. They're supposed to be out there with their kids. All right. You go out there, you see them cry. The baby's crying on the street like, wah, wah, wah. It's either too hot or it's too cold or the weather is stuffy. And you know, diaper is filled with, 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 with the diaper is filled with poo, and like they don't have any changes, they don't have any more diapers. It's a hard knock life, man. It's a hard knock life, but no one is paying for them or their kids anymore. They're gonna have to figure it out for themselves. And then, and then, once 10 cities finally come along, you know, once they go in, they're not gonna be coming out because they're gonna say basically, you weren't doing anything out here productive in the first place, and you want to come out of 10 city, you're not coming out of 10 city. All right, they'll tell them all kinds of BS, like, oh, we're taking you here to get aid. Just like, just like when they institutionalize you, they're like, "Oh yeah, yeah, we're just gonna, we're just gonna do some observation." Three weeks later, you're still stuck there. Three months later, three months becomes three years, and then now you find, now you figure out you've been in there for a couple of years or even a couple of decades. Yeah, listen, it's gonna be like that. A lot of people are gonna go when they, when you go into Ten City, you are not coming out of Ten City. All right, these people are gonna be in Ten City, and it's gonna be hard in Ten City. And I've said this plenty of times. I'll say it once. I'll say it again. Tyrone is the king of Tent City, and he is going to rule Tent City with a with a with a with a strong fist. All right, with an iron fist, he is going to rule Tent City. When he is hungry, he will be eat. When he is thirsty, he will drink. When Tyrone wants some loving, he will get some loving. And he is not putting up with any nonsense in Tent City because he is the king of Tent City. I know many of you guys are probably wondering about the video, the length of these videos now. You're probably noticing that, you know, I went from producing videos that were between 10 and 15 minutes long to basically put, producing borderline full-length documentaries. What's happening now is how YouTube has changed. YouTube basically wants us to create longer videos now, sit-down videos. For example, they want me to make videos where you're going to take this video and you're going to sit down and watch television. So the people who that are most valued on YouTube right now are basically people watching these videos, let's say, on their laptop. They're laying down or relaxing and watching this video on their laptop, and they're going to be watching the video. They want to watch videos for a long period of time because YouTube is now and you is basically now replacing platforms like Netflix and Disney Plus and Hulu, you know, even Crunchyroll. Guys, for example, when I want to watch something now, when I want to watch something, if I can't find something on Crunchyroll, I'm basically screwed. The only time, the only thing that I actually really use Hulu and Netflix for are basically anime and the occasional show. Very rarely, this is like the first time in years that I've ever done this, where like there was a show called Shogun, and this is like the first time ever, one of the first few times ever, in like ten years since Hulu's been around, that I've actually watched a show on there. Other than that, I've only used Hulu for things like Bleach, A Thousand Year Blood War. So I think that's what it's called. Like to watch and, and Netflix is the exact same thing. I only use Netflix for anime. And if uh and if like and like for example, there was like this anime recently about dragons and not dragons and monsters, eating monsters in a dragon in, in a dungeon. I really liked it. And uh that's that was it. And I was spending like almost 20 bucks a month just to watch that one anime. You know, when Bleach Thousand Year Blood War comes back or whatever it's called. You know, I think we're on like I don't know if it's season two or three. I think it's season three or core three. You know, I'll be base. I'll basically renew for that, and I'll basically watch that again, and then I'll cancel my subscription. And then what they do is they get by, they get by based on the notion that people are not going to cancel their subscriptions. But I sure as hell am canceling my subscription. I'm not sticking around for this crap. I am one hundred percent not sticking around. I cancel my so like I just recently canceled my Hulu subscription. And I cancel my Netflix subscription again. If there's, if you don't offer me any value, then I'm not going to stick around. You know, I used to, I watched a show called The Dragon Prince on Drag Dragon Dragon Prince on Netflix, and I can I don't like some of the themes in there, but you know, it's I've been kind of invested in the story for so long. But the but the series is about to wrap up. I think I think I don't know if it's this season or this or the next season after that, where it's where there that's basically the end of it. And I am so looking forward to it. And yeah. So I mean that's that's one of the reason why these videos are getting longer. Like it's not just me. You can look you can look at a lot of other YouTube channels now, and the videos are getting much longer with a lot of YouTubers because 
this is basically a sit down experience. A lot of people want, you know, are want longer videos. They want to be able to sit down, relax, enjoy their video while they're having a meal. And, you know, there's going to be always the people who watch like this video for a little bit of time, a short period of time, and then they're going to just drop off. But then there are another portion, there are another group of people where you know exactly who you are right now. You're chilling, you're watching, probably eating your steak or your whatever the hell you guys eat, living your life, living your best life, drinking a beer or whatever, or soda, or, you know, Coca-Cola, because you guys like your Coca-Cola. Guys, they love Coca-Cola in Mexico. Like they even have like there's a, there's actually a difference between Mexican Coca Cola and American Coca Cola, and they do it in glass bottles. I really like the way the Mexicans do it over there. They love Coca Cola over there, but, uh, but yeah, regard back to what I was talking about. So yeah, the longer form videos. You know, you guys know who you are. You want to sit down. You want to watch these videos. You want to enjoy these videos for a longer period of time. And it sucks when you're like, oh, it's a ten minute video or a fifteen minute video, and it's finished very quickly. But when you have a longer video. You don't really care at some point. Like you just want to relax, sit back, and just and just hear angry guy talk crap for an hour. So now, basically, that's what YouTube has done. If we want to have our videos seen, and if we want to have, if we want to be able to do better on the platform, our videos have to be longer. We have to build longer videos, create an adventure for you guys. You can sit back, kick back, relax, and um, and give you an experience similar to Netflix now. Or, and to these other platforms like Crunchyroll, for example, most videos on that platform are 20 minutes long. We now have to keep you here for a much longer time than that, you know, because there's, there's, there are, there are just, there are a lot of people who are just going to keep on listening. Like once they're into the video, after they've been watching for five minutes, they're probably going to watch the whole video and they're not going to change. They're just not going to go to anything else. Because what, what other video are they going to watch? What else are they actually going to watch? They're going to, what are they going to do? Jump to something else? jump to something else that's like 10 minutes long you know they've already been listening to this for this for for this long for this point of point in time and they're like ah you know what it's not bad it's entertaining it's keeping me entertained and keeping me distracted which is kind of what life is out about at this point so i'm just gonna keep on listening because what are the alternatives i can go and watch a five minute video and then i gotta jump to another five minute video or a 10 minute video and you're like oh well, that's not so bad but think about it carefully if you're kicking back and relaxing you want to be entertained for a couple of hours or even an hour, it gets annoying have to, having to go from one 10 minute video to another 10 minute video to another 10 minute video to another 10 minute video versus being engaged in one video where you're, where, you know, you're getting ups and downs and peaks and highs and lows and you're going on an adventure, man. You're going on an adventure. And I really enjoy doing that. I really enjoy, <laughs> I really enjoy, I really enjoy taking you guys on an adventure, taking you on you know, taking you on Bill and Ted's excellent adventure. You guys remember Bill and Ted from the night, from the 80s, man? Bill and Ted's excellent adventure. Those were the days. It it's it's uh it's interesting. It's actually it's absolutely it's absolutely interesting. Since is under threat from this new phase of AI, let's bring in Dear Jabosa. She's out west with today's tech check. Deirdre. Hey, Kelly, that was a great interview. And, you know, every company that may be threatened by generative AI finds a way to say that they're going to harness it. And I think that the Duolingo CEO did just that. What he was talking about, though, felt more like an argument in the chatbot era. And this week, with the OpenAI demo with Project Astra at Google I.O., we're moving into this era of agents. So when he says that one of the most important things is conversational language learning. That's exactly what these agents do. You can interrupt them. And I think that they can emote, they can rationalize. So I think that that's a huge difference from what he says that we have seen over the last, I think he said, eight years with Google Translate. A lot of that capability we've already had, but what you're seeing on your screen right now is you know more of a tutor, someone who can respond to you in real time. And I think that that is a big shift. Certainly, you know, a lot that they will have to confront in this new model with this new generative AI. I'll also just say that Duolingo has held up, you know, a little better than some of the other public ed tech companies. You look at a Coursera and a Chegg, that 12-month performance, and they've really been seen as most vulnerable in this generative AI shift. You can see right there, that's Chegg. But if you look at those three names, Coursera as well, and Duolingo, you can see that, you know, they have been a little vulnerable. 
ad tech is another area that we've talked about, Kelly, that could be vulnerable here, right? When you give all of these creative tools to the AI, but these names have held up a lot better. I'm talking about the Trade Desk, Pubmatic, Magnite, and here generative AI really is seen as a co-pilot that does need to be harnessed by creatives. And I wonder if there's any areas that, you know, any, and we've talked obviously about the disruption to businesses like Fiverr and those that had traditionally kind of outsourced work that your AI yes. agent now may be able to do for you. Um, I wonder if there's areas we're not thinking about that could be enhanced. You know, maybe Duolingo's right. And now the ability to learn language conversationally will actually be much easier and draw more more people in. I mean, what are other places, I wonder, that we should be thinking about, not just, you know, what's going to go away from this, but um, what could be enhanced? You hit on one of the most relevant conversations, especially that's being had here in Silicon Valley over the last 12, 18 months, ever since we saw ChatGBT. This idea that in the long run, this is going to lead to more jobs, not less, better skilled jobs, upskilling by the workforce. But I think in these early stages, Kelly, we're still seeing that shake out. And maybe at the beginning, we thought that chatbots would eliminate blue collar workers. What we've seen so far is white collar workers, right? It gives people the ability to code. So maybe it's leading to less junior engineers to make way for the really expensive talent that are AI scientists, data scientists. Um, so we're still in the early stages. We're seeing that shake out. But um, some of those white collar jobs will have to be sacrificed first is what we're seeing until we see that real efficiency and upskilling take place. Absolutely. Dear Jeffrey. You know, here's the thing, guys, and it's something that you have to absolutely consider. So for men, this really doesn't matter. Of course, there are going to be a bunch of jokers who are like, oh, my job is gone. The reality is if you've been working, for example, in the gaming industry for 20 years and you don't have the you don't have the, the capacity to go out and strike out on your own to develop your own game, then especially with the tools that are around today, then what ha what the hell have you been really doing? It's about taking the skill sets that you've learned in your field and then reapplying them in other areas to do things on your own. If you cannot do something without people, without handouts, then you failed at life. I'm just being honest. Nothing is free in this world. Every Life is hard. Just because you have a lot of people who've been handed things doesn't mean you're going to be one of them. And these things dry up over time. You get used to this type of life. Guys, for example, a universal basic income or universal high income would be horrible for people. Because just imagine, people get used to a universal high income, and at some point, they take it away. <laughs> like, no one thinks about this. Just imagine you get used to a universal high income where you're getting like fat checks of five thousand dollars a month, and even but the thing is with inflation and everything else, most of that is basically being taken away from you. But hey, you don't have to work, you don't have to do anything. You you be basically able to eat, sleep, and poop for free and just live a hiki, hiki, a hikikomori life. And then let's say the system starts to go bottom up and they can no longer afford to or do or no longer want to give you that money and now you need to go back into the workforce and actually provide real value how many people are going to be able to do that most of them most people won't be able to do that because their skill sets will have fallen behind a lot of people will no longer be able to do basic math reading comprehension will have gone down because everyone's using um especially gen zers they're all using dictation so it's being read to them you've got to be kidding me so they can't read they can't write they can't do math their, their skill sets have lagged. They don't know how to think anymore. And skills that they had previously, like programmers, they can't program anymore. They didn't keep up to date with the new technology, the latest technology. So they're all doing so. The last the last thing they remember was, was C plus or C, C sharp or C plus or C sharp or C plus plus. And that's already been replaced by Rust. That was replaced by Rust 20 years ago. But if you guys hear Rust, you don't even know what Rust is. That's a new programming language, guys. Okay. That's that's just how insane society is. There's brand new programming languages coming out. Almost, it feels like every day now. Maybe it's not every day, but it's constant. Okay? It's insane. It's insane. People think that technology is making our lives easier. The reality is, in many ways, it's making our lives more complex. And those that think that they're going to get something for free, I have a, it, there's a rude awakening coming for them. Nothing is free in this world, S.A., this is a hard world to live in, hombre. It's 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 muy difícil. I don't know, guys. I don't know. I'm really kind of excited about the whole Duolingo thing because I've got to. I want to work more on my on my language skills. You know, I want to I want to refine my language skills a bit more, and I definitely want to learn Japanese much better because, like, I can speak a little Japanese, not a ton, and it's kind of messed up because 
I've been watching anime. I've been like just like almost everything I I consume is in Japanese. So much of the content on a daily basis, most is either YouTube or it's or it's just anime. So the fact that I cannot speak fluent Japanese kind of pisses me off, and I really want to. Even though my Spanish is not terrible, I definitely want to get better to the point where I feel even more comfortable. So you know, it's it's um, it's just something that I have to work on and think on, think about. And I think that with D, with uh, with uh, with with generative AI, you can learn certain phrases. For example, like in Spanish, they say things strange. Let's give them like all kinds of strange phrases. For example, you know, like if you're drinking, if you're if you're if you have a drink, right? And it's a very good drink, and it tastes good. You, you don't. Most a lot of people won't say "esta es muy bueno." They'll say "es muy rico," and you're like, "What? Muy rico?" And it means very rich. And you're like, "It's a." They'll say so. It's like a way of saying it's very good. But instead of saying, instead of saying, you know, "es muy bueno," no, 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 "es muy rico." "Es muy rico." Like, get the hell out of here. And you wouldn't know these things unless you, you're you around Spanish-speaking people and you have Spanish-speaking friends. Oh, God. To teach you, like, the slangs and all that other stuff. <laughs> Guys, it's about just continually developing yourself. But I will say, like I said, it just I've, I've learned my lesson. Like You got to be careful with people because sometimes you'll have a dollar in your pocket and you're like, all I have is a dollar in my pocket. You don't understand that there are a lot of people that will that will basically want to control all to delete you for that dollar because they are losers. And you might think that they're doing better than everyone else. The reality is you don't know how much they've stolen from other, from other people to get to where they are. And again, guys, do not forget guys, come and join the angry guy clubhouse. It's awesome. It's nice over here. All right. We've got guys for you. We've got guys and all kinds of stuff. It's going to teach you how to make some money. We've got articles for you on all kinds of different things, everything from discussing how why the dark ages were actually something that was planned, all right, or how to, you know, are, you know, talking about the silent rage of Gen X and why Thanos, Thanos made a mistake. He should have done a population cap instead of, you know, wiping out half of the universe or why men are staying home and just watching society burn, you know, or how men, men going their own way has actually robbed women of their futures, you know. Or, hey, are just how to build a thriving business empire and have fun doing it. We've got something for everyone, you know. We talk about a wide range of subjects like how the boomers destroyed our futures and now many are, uh, now millions of them are ending up homeless or how DI, DEI, so diversity, equity, inclusion, has backfired and the unintended consequences on women and society. There's something for everyone. You could also head over to chat. You know, we have podcasts. We have extended videos. Guys, what more do you want? What more do you want? And to top that off, when you do sign up, when you do join, it's so lit, it's so awesome. You also get a free copy of the Digital Nomad Blueprint. I mean, what are you guys thinking? What are you doing? You're not you're not there yet. You need to get over there. You need to get over there, guys. Our society is such a cesspool, but it does nothing's going to change. You're just gonna have to keep on grinding, putting money away, and investing in yourself. That's the best that you can do, and that's the best advice that I could really give to you guys. Because this is a, it's not going to get any better, guys. It's only going to get worse. It's only going to get much, much worse. But, guys, I want to know what you think regarding all of this. Society is rushing to get rid of low-skilled workers. And I'm personally very pleased about this. I think they're scumbags, and I'm grateful that they won't have jobs soon. Let me know your thoughts on this, and we'll talk about it in the comments. Like the video if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you like the video, share the video. And just remember that all roads lead to MWA. and walking away. And... Cheers. You know, guys, congratulations. It's a celebration. If you made it to the end of this video, because this is a this was a one hour video. This is a one hour video, a little just a few minutes over an hour. It was a one hour video. And if you stuck around, if you stuck around to the very, very end of this video, I want to congratulate you. I want to congratulate you. I would think of doing something special like, okay, well, if you made it this, this far, then here's a, here's, a, here's a gift for you. But, like, I have to be careful with that because there are some people who might say, okay, so Angry does these things at the end of his videos. So I'm just going to start scrolling to the end of every single video to find out if he's giving away something. Yeah, so I'm not going to do that here. But I am going to give you a spe I'm going to give you a special congratulations if you were able to watch, if you watch this video to the end. On the other hand, Many of you, you are just enjoying yourself, enjoying your dinner, you're enjoying your meal, 
you know, and you just wanted something to watch, and I gave you that. All right. So, you know, good job to me too. I have to give myself give myself credit. Gotta give myself credit. All right, guys. So congratulations on making it to the end. And you know, you know, load up another video, load up another video, man. Enjoy yourself. All right. Keep the let's keep the party going. You know, the boomers just like they could they didn't care about anyone else but themselves. You know, you gotta care about you, man. Just don't care about anyone else and just do you, bro. Do you. And cheers.